Bears quarterback Justin Fields isn't playing good enough. He's missing reads. He's missing throws. But he's also super, super talented. And occasionally, he does stuff that makes me go, whoa, that's uh, that's special. Wow. I mean, the guy, like I said, Justin Fields runs the ball better than some running backs in the NFL. He's still in progress. You got to give it time. You got to give him patience. But I think that opens up an interesting conversation. How much time and patience should you give to a young quarterback? And when do you give up on your young quarterback? Like, how long is too long to support a young quarterback? I would almost say that Justin Fields, with a new coach, learning a new offense, you almost extend your time even farther. Because when it's one thing if Justin Fields got brought in with a rookie head coach who is an offensive genius and they worked really well together. But to fire the coach you got drafted by, having to learn a new system when you're already a young quarterback behind the eight ball, that's a tough thing. I think you got to move the goalpost even farther back for Justin Fields. But I think for the most part, for the most part, I don't want to make a blanket statement here, but generally you should give young quarterbacks in the NFL two years. And then year three is when you start to raise your expectations. I think especially with guys with a lot of potential, you just, if you have a lot of talent and a lot of natural physical ability, I think that gives you even more time. And I would give even more patience to that guy. Like Josh Allen's first year in Buffalo, he threw 10 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Can you imagine if after one year Buffalo said, well, this guy's awful, let's move on. Can you imagine? Like, they didn't do that, clearly. They made the playoffs in their second year with him as their starting quarterback. But, like, good thing Buffalo was patient because now he's maybe the best quarterback in the entire NFL. I think the only reasons you should give up on a quarterback in the first two years of their career is if the guy has off-the-field problems uh, or if the guy has no potential at all. He's very limited. He's physically not very good. Or if you get a better opportunity. Um I think of actually Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville. Gardner Minshew was doing well, but he's got limited potential. He doesn't have a great arm. And Jacksonville had the opportunity to draft Trevor Lawrence. I think Gardner Minshew is a quarterback in the NFL who could win. If you put him on a great football team, I think he could do what Cooper Rush did in Dallas. Go 4-1, and one, win a lot of games. But Trevor Lawrence has more potential. He's a better opportunity. And Gardner Minshew is a little bit limited, so I understood that. Arizona. They gave up. Arizona gave up on Josh Rosen quarterback at UCLA after just one year and they did that because they were able to draft Kyler Murray number one overall and in my opinion that's a better opportunity and the right move you get Kyler Murray a special talent who's got a ton of physical gifts that's a better opportunity than having Josh Rosen as your starting quarterback uh, I hate to bring up this you know I, I I say everything I'm about to say with a lot of respect I don't want to Speak ill of someone who died. But I'm trying to find an example of a quarterback who had problems off the field. Uh, Jamarcus Russell comes to mind. But the most recent one I can think of where a team gave up on a quarterback after one year. May he forever rest in peace is Dwayne Haskins. Washington had problems with Dwayne Haskins off the field. And they moved on. They very quickly got rid of the guy. And they were probably right to move on. I've talked about how he died. It's it's really sad. It's one of the most... um, moving stories in football. And I don't mean to um, step over his grave, but I would also go back and say for an example of a team that, hey, the guy had off the field problems, that might be Washington with Dwayne Haskins or even uh, I would say Johnny Menzel in Cleveland. But if your young quarterback in year one is having problems off the field, I, I think it's justified to move on and find a different option. Now, as I look around the NFL right now, here are guys who I think deserve patience, who haven't been around long enough um, to really come down hard on them. I think if Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville had an up and down kind of roller coaster of a year, some good games, some bad games, but I can forgive the bad because he's in year two of his career. He's also got a new head coach and a new offense, and he's in Jacksonville. He had to endure Urban Meyer. I can live with that. Justin Fields in Chicago. Dude, the guy is so talented and Hopefully someday his coaches recognize, hey, the dude's special running the football. We're going to call sprint outs. We're going to call bootlegs. We're going to get the guy on the perimeter running the football. I don't know why Luke Getz isn't doing that. Third and one last week on Thursday night killed me. First and goal killed me. I don't know when they're going to figure out, hey, 
maybe straight drop back passes with our guy who's got an incredible ability to run and a bad offensive line isn't exactly the thing we should be leaning into on every single critical down. I would give a lot of patience to Justin Fields, probably more than you think, because not only is he a young quarterback with a lot of potential, uh, he, I mean, the potential is so high. Like, I'm willing to wait for him to figure it out because what he can do is special. I'll wait longer than almost anyone because I really believe he works hard, he's going to figure it out, and what could be achieved with his talent level is so special if you can figure it out. But also, remember, Justin Fields is in year two of his career with his second head coach. He's learning another offensive system. That's not great. Uh, I think of Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh. Dude, the guy's halfway through his rookie year. Not even halfway through his rookie year. Be patient with Kenny Pickett. Uh, give him time. I, I've seen enough from Kenny Pickett to believe in him. I think he's awesome. I think he's going to be good in time. But you got to give him enough time to learn the offense, learn the intricacies, and catch up to the NFL speed. I think Kenny Pickett's going to be totally fine. But it's year one. I think that's the easiest guy to argue is Kenny Pickett. Another guy who I think deserves, but you know, tons of patience is Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson, by the way, he's three and zero right now as a starting quarterback with the Jets. It's been a kind of a roller coaster, ups and downs, kind of a roller coaster rookie year, and some he's been hurt early on in his second year. But the the potential is there. Like the best plays of Zach Wilson are good enough to make me go, you know what? Let's endure some some suffering here because what could be is special. And I, I go back to this. Zach Wilson works hard. Justin Fields works hard. Trevor Lawrence, Kenny Pickett, these are guys who, with good coaching and patience, I don't think these are lazy human beings. I, I do not believe you get to where they are in football. And plus, I've seen the trajectory. People have a hard time understanding that quarterbacks can get better. The ultimate example of that is the quarterback in Philly, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, from year one of Alabama to where he is now, Alabama, then Oklahoma, then the NFL. Every year I have watched Jalen Hurts play football, he's gotten better as a quarterback. You have to acknowledge that. When people work their tails off, they get better. Justin Fields is going to get better. I believe in that wholeheartedly. He's come a long way from being the backup quarterback at Georgia to where he is now. But you got to give him patience. And if you allow time for Justin Fields to develop, if you don't, I know it's painful to watch your team the Chicago Bears lose. I know it's frustrating when he's got receivers open and he's missing them or, or not seeing them. But you got to let it gel. You got to let it work. Because if you give Justin Fields patience, what could be is incredible. The, the potential is there. So, um, you know, Davis Mills is a guy in his second year quarterback in Houston. He was one of the ones where I'd say, I don't know that you need to have patience for Davis Mills. You know, if they have a chance to draft Bryce Young, the quarterback out of Alabama, that's a better opportunity in my mind. Davis Mills has limited potential. He's not a quarterback who can run around and make crazy plays. Bryce Young is. That's a Josh Rosen, Kyler Murray situation in my mind. Uh, I think you might be able to make a similar argument with Mac Jones in New England. Mac Jones has done well. But if Mac Jones isn't making good decisions, he's not valuable to your team anymore because... He's not physically gifted. He can't run around and make crazy special plays. He has made the playoffs, and that might be enough potential shown to warrant patience. I don't want to have the Mac Jones debate, but if if Mac Jones does get benched to Bailey Zappi, who's playing better and making better decisions, I, I wouldn't be shocked, and I, I would actually defend the Patriots there because Mac Jones isn't special physically. He can't run around and make crazy special plays and do stuff that other quarterbacks simply cannot do. Justin Fields does stuff that can't be replicated. Mac Jones? I think you can find Mac Jones, a, a guy who can't run around and, and make good decisions. There might be a lot of those running around. How special really is Mac Jones? I, I say that respectfully, but eh, he's fine. Now, here are the NFL quarterbacks who are past their window of patience, I would call it. These are guys who have been around for a while, and now it's time to deliver. I think of Jared Goff in Detroit. Hey, man, I'm so sorry you got traded to Detroit. That's rough. However, you've been in the NFL long enough. It's time to figure it out. Carson Wentz in Washington. Philly, New England, Philly, Indy, now Washington. I have a lot of um, 
empathy for Carson Wentz. I thought he got unjustly screwed over in Indy. He was not the problem with that football team. He maybe could have played better at times, but there was a lot of things going wrong in Indy, and Carson Wentz got blamed for all of it, kind of scapegoated. However, I can't tell you what Carson Wentz does well. He's good at getting hurt a lot, but outside of that, I'm like, ah, what are we doing with Carson Wentz? I'm waiting for the guy to play well. He's often not available. He's often injured. He's got a decent receiving core now in Washington. Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin. And it's still kind of middling. Daniel Jones in New York is another guy who I have empathy for Daniel Jones. He's had a, a really rough go of things, man. Not a great offensive line. Uh, turmoil at head coach. However, Daniel Jones has been around the NFL long enough that it's time to figure it out. And, and good news is Giants are 5-1. and one. I can't tell you what happened. I'm not sure why the camera cut out. I don't know what happened, but here we are. We're back. Uh, let's talk about Daniel Jones. Good news for Daniel Jones is that Daniel Jones is 5-1 and one right now. Doing good enough to win, playing fairly clean football. Um, and I would say Daniel Jones is doing good enough right now. He should remain the starting quarterback in New York because they have much bigger problems. Now, Daniel Jones, I would rather have Bryce Young than Daniel Jones. But Daniel Jones, I think, is doing fine. But again, he's at that point where it's been long enough in his NFL career where he's got to start delivering. He's at the end of the rope where patience is wearing thin, and I think deservedly so. Then I think of Tua in Miami. Tua is in year three of his NFL career. And Joe Burrow took Cincinnati to the Super Bowl last year, in year two. Justin Herbert might be 19-19 and right now as a starting quarterback in the NFL, but he's shown a lot of physical gifts. He's one of the better quarterbacks. He's also playing hurt. Tua has deserved skepticism in Miami. People are saying, yeah, you're not physically very good. It's time for Tua to deliver. I, I would, I'm willing to give Tua one more year after this year. I'll, I'll extend what happened because he got a new head coach and stuff. But actually, no, I actually, no, I wouldn't. Here's why you got to not have patience for Tua. He's got Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, an awesome head coach. Miami's put all their eggs in one basket on, and really every resource they possibly could to support their young quarterback, Tua. It either works or it doesn't. Good news is Tua's been playing pretty well. Without him, they look Miami's losing games, actually. Looks like Tua's working out. But if you're not patient for Tua, I understand, and I'm with you, because it's time for Tua to deliver. This whole... The whole theme of the year for Miami this year was put up or shut up. Tua's got to figure it out, and we got to decide whether he can play or not because the team is too good to be wasted by the quarterback who can't play. And here's why, I think another reason why you got to really lack patience with Tua, and I wouldn't even say lack patience. I would say raise your expectations for Tua. Let's say Tua doesn't work this year. you got to go find another quarterback because, again, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell – cannot have the prime years of their career wasted with a quarterback who isn't playing well. I'll go back to this. Tua is playing well. But here's another reason why you can't be patient with Tua. He's not that physically gifted. Tua isn't doing a lot of stuff that you can't, you know, maybe replace physically. He's not running around and making crazy plays. Now, the thing Tua does well that he never gets credit for, his anticipation is out the wazoo. He's just making all kinds of throws before receivers are breaking finding windows. He's great at that. And that's, I, I would even comp him to Drew Brees. Like that's Drew Brees level decision-making and timing. So I, I like Tua. I think he's playing well. He's justifying his ability, his space. But if Tua has a bad rest of the year, I would actually say Miami should move on and find a new quarterback because you cannot waste the best years of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell with a quarterback who not only isn't playing well, but is physically not the most dominant quarterback. That being said, Tua is playing well, but I think you need to have expectations for Tua because of where he is in the NFL and his time. So anyone lacking patience for Tua, I'm with you, but I, I think right now he's answering the call and playing well. I, you know, there's another tier, though, another level of guys who, um, when a quarterback gets paid a ton of money, uh, expectations go up even more. I start expecting you to perform at a really high level and win games. I think of Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott. Uh, 
Joe Flacco was once one of these guys who who got paid a ton of money and didn't work out and lost his job. When you start signing big contracts, like over $150 million, not only do you need to play well, you need to win games and you need to play well in big moments and be available. You can't be injured all the time. You could argue that these three quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, and Dak Prescott, have failed the criteria for a guy being paid a ton of money, at least recently. They haven't delivered in big moments recently. They're not winning a ton of games. They've been injured. They they all have different problems. But if you're going to make a, over $150 million, my expectations go through the roof for you. And recently, not great. Kirk Cousins is another guy. He signed a, a much more, I would say, modest contract early to start. He remember he signed like an $83 million contract. But Kirk is getting paid a ton of money now. Thankfully, Minnesota's 5-1, and one, but I'm not, I don't have any patience for Kirk Cousins. If he doesn't play well, he's out of there. Like, they got Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, an awesome head coach. Kirk has to play well and win. He's 5-1 and one right now. He's answering the call. But these are people who, when you make a ton of money and you've been around the league for a while, expectations have to go up. So I, I say all that to say I am not a pushover. I When quarterbacks aren't delivering, I come down hard on them. But you got to be patient. You got to be fair. I went on a whole rant for one episode a long time ago about how people often forget Drew Brees, his entire career almost didn't happen. He was in San Diego with the Chargers, and they said, ah, we're going to discard you, throw you in the trash, replace you with Phillip Rivers. He went to New Orleans, and his career got resurrected with Sean Payton. But Drew Brees was like really, really close to never happening, never having the Hall of Fame career he had. That's why you have to be patient with quarterbacks because when a young quarterback is given time and and allowed to grow and succeed, great things can happen, but you got to give them a proper amount of support. So especially early on, you know, I think of uh, Zach Wilson, Kenny Pickett, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, be patient and allow quarterbacks time to succeed. But at some point enough is enough and when enough is enough. When they've been around the league, when they've had lots of opportunities to succeed, Mitchell Trubisky was allowed more than enough time in Chicago. He couldn't make it work. So I, I want to be clear. I will defend guys like Justin Fields who are making mistakes and missing receivers who are open because I don't think he's getting great coaching. He's learning a new system, and he's young, and the potential is there. You give time and allow Justin Fields room to grow. But at some point, Like two years from now, if Justin Fields is still making the mistakes he's making today, I will say, "Ah, I've waited long enough. But you got to allow Justin Fields room to grow and get better. And unfortunately, uh, life is not fair. The more physically gifted and more talented you are, the longer that rope is, the more patience and time I will give you. Um, And that's just because if you figure out with Justin Fields, that's pretty special. Justin Fields can do stuff running the football that Davis Mills, the quarterback in Houston, simply cannot.